feel like it's been a really, really long time since I last made something with you guys, so let's do that. I used an online circle skirt calculator to help me make a pattern for one quarter of a skirt that would be double my waist measurement for cute waist gathers and reach to around mid calf. It'll end up longer with a ruffle, but I thought that was a good base. I took a lot of inspiration from Minji's videos analyzing and recreating the Selkie Ritz dresses, but ultimately compromised on or just changed several elements due to limitations like the amount of fabric I had. The main fabric for the skirt was a very soft pink net or tulle, which I got as a remnant and thus was very limited in quantity. I ended up going with a three quarter circle skirt so that I could put more fabric into the ruffle. Because the fabric is so fine and delicate and shifts around so much, I found it was easier to cut lying on top of the pattern than with the paper pattern on top. I seamed the pieces of the skirt together and also the roughly 10 inch ruffle which was made up from many small pieces as it was cut from the leftovers. The final ruffle ended up being about twice the length of the hem. Because I wasn't hemming the net and I wanted to keep seams as delicate as possible, I finished the ends of threads with a tiny dot of fabric glue to prevent seams unravelling. The only place I backstitched the seam was at the base of the side opening, where I left the top 15 centimetres or so of the seam open so I could put the skirt on. I expect this area to be under more stress than the other seams of this garment. Now I had an overskirt, I used the same process to cut and seam a lining out of an inexpensive fabric I picked up from the sale section. Both skirts now need to hang up at least overnight to allow the fabric to relax and stretch before I finish the hem. By comparing to the original pattern, you can see how much length the lining gained. More where the fabric hung directly on the bias, less the closer you get to the straight of grain. Either way, it's easy to true everything back up again. The net doesn't really need trimming or hemming, but the lining does. So to finish up the bottom edge of the lining, I'm going to use my rolled hem foot on the machine. Getting seams started with a rolled hem foot can be a little tricky. What I normally do is this. Double fold the hem, put that under the machine. A straight awl helps control fabric where you can't reach your fingers. Foot down. Drop the needle through the double fold. Foot back up. Guide the fabric edge into the rolled part of the foot foot back down and you're ready to sew. I wanted my ruffle to have a large top section above the gathers, so I'm marking a guideline on a machine with washi tape for where I want the top edge in relation to the sewing line. Then it's machine on the largest stitch length of foot down for many, many meters. It's good practice to do two lines of gathering stitches, but this was huge and I am lazy, so I only did one. Once the ruffle has all the gathering stitches sewn, I can begin to gather it down by pulling on one of the two machine threads and easing the gathers along. There's a lot of fussing around at this stage, trying to make it all look even and pleasant.
Once the ruffle was pinned in place, with the gather line even with the hem of the skirt, I sewed two lines of regular stitches to attach them together, at about a machine foot's width apart and above the gathering line. The net layer didn't need ironing or finishing, but the lining, which is still separate, certainly did. So I gave everything a quick press before finishing the side opening on the lining. With the seam allowances pressed flat, I just had to sew down one side of the opening, drop the needle and pivot 90 degrees, sew across the bottom, and repeat for the third side. Then both the net layer and the lining layer get lines of gathering stitches at the waist, because it's finally time to combine the two. This time, because it was much shorter, I was good and did two lines of gathers, like you're supposed to. The waistband is just a straight piece of the lining fabric which I marked up to my waist measurement. I'm leaving a bit of space on either side for emergencies. Here I'm lining up either side of the side opening with the marked ends of the waistband, top layer or net layer, against the right side of the fabric. Then it's just more gathering and fussing until it's the right size and looks nice. Then the lining layer gets stuffed inside and the same process gets repeated, right side towards the right side of the waistband with the net layer sandwiched in between. It all gets shoved under the machine for the final load-bearing seam of this project. Going slow and being careful that all the layers are arranged in the way that you want is essential. I folded the waistband in half, right sides together, and sewed straight across these ends to get sharp right angles at either edge.
Once flipped out the right way, the inside of the waistband gets finished by hand with little whip stitches, just to cover all the raw edges. I try to only catch the lining layer with my needle. I find the easiest way to do this is to have my index finger underneath where I'm working so that I can feel if the needle goes too far through. Finally, I add two hooks and eyes to close. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I think the final result is rather magical and I absolutely want to try the full Selkie experience and make a dress with extravagantly full skirts at some point. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to keep the YouTube gods happy. Follow me on Instagram to make my cat happy. And down in the description box you'll find a link to my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off or reoccurring donation to support this channel. Which will not only make me happy, but get you early access to all of my videos. Dream big, and I'll see you next time.